Where does it say? Look at it. Hey, you're lying. 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 you are it shall be the prophet. Show us. Listen. And Show this us. is the blessing wherein Moses, the man of God, the children of Israel, and his death. And he said to the Lord, Come from Sinai and rose up from Seir and unto them on Shai from the Mount of Paran. He came with the ten thousand of his saints at the right hand and the fiery Lord so from them. And yet yeah, he loved the people of Israel. And, and hand, you want to kill them? And then sat down his feet and received them. Who do I want to kill? Who do I want to kill? Who do I want to kill? You don't do black magic. Misinterpret the Bible. Are you misinterpreting the Bible? You've got a problem. You're lying. You're lying. You can't believe it. You're lying. See, you run away. That's how Christianity is. You walk away. A good brother. No, bro. What's he saying? What's he going to debate about? Do you know where Shams is? No, I don't. You know where Lemon is? Lemon? Yeah, no, that's appreciated. Yeah, I will debate him on that. On how Christianity is destroying the world. Yeah, definitely. You ain't got, yeah, come. Yeah, straight. Christianity has got no chance, bro. Okay. What do you want to do? Yeah, how Christianity is destroying the world, yeah? Yeah. Come, when? We can do it now. I'm going to do time. So you, yeah, you could you do a timer? Because it's better, you Yeah. Do you want to do two minutes? Yeah, let's do it. 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 Five minutes, five minutes. Five minutes each. All right. Okay. Keep your word, bro. Respect. I, 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 I ain't scared uh, of anybody, respect, bro. This guy's, this guy's gonna... Yeah. All right. Okay, you want to be... I mean, who wants to go first? Five minutes, five minutes. We're going to do five minutes, five minutes, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I really want to finish. So the debate is, is Christianity destroying the world? Okay. We have, we have to make sure, we have to, we have to okay. check that first. Five minutes, five minutes. Yeah. Cool. Okay, and um, where do you want to finish? Uh, in right. about, depending on the rain. rain yeah, it's gonna like, if the weather worse. improves, we could maybe go beyond an hour, good. but if it's not, if it's going on like this, after an hour. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. You're, 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 this is your accusation. Christianity, accusation. Is, destroying Christianity is destroying the world. Okay. So, so Tell me five when you minutes want to start. if you want to start laying out why Christianity is destroying the world. You see, a lot of countries, they have changed the name Christianity to democracy. They do not actually, when they say to you, oh, we want you to democratize a country, they are actually talking about Christianize a country. And by that, I do not mean the people who are on the street, Joe Blog, so to speak. I'm talking about the country's economic and leadership. They wish to Christianize that. And if we see what the Christian ideals are, we see that Christianity teaches to exploit the poor using interest-based economics. We see Christianity teaches to keep the poor alcoholics. You know, it says for the, for the kings and the queens not to drink, but it says keep the poor alcoholics, give them alcohol, so they do not remember why they are poor. These are just two of the Christianities teachings that are used to exploit the world. When the, when the Christians, they went to the New World, or when they went to Australia, the Bible had taught them how to exploit the poor and how to take over the country. Because the Bible had told them to use fire water, whiskey, alcohol, to turn the locals into alcoholics. And then they had also taught them to use other economic practices to continue to enslave them. The Bible also taught that you have to enslave people. If you actually look at why America, why white European Christians 
were enslaving black Africans, it was because the Bible taught them that these people are heathens that are going to hell and it is better to enslave them than to leave them to be who they are. And now, as we see all of these things over the years, they've all compacted together to bring us to where we are today. Exploitative economic practices, which are ruining the world, which come down from Christianity. Alcoholism, the uh, largest killer. If alcohol had been created today, it would be illegal. But because alcohol is a legal Christian drug, a Christian drug, that's what alcohol is. It's a drug for Christianity to turn people into alcoholics. Also, we have other uh, things. Well, actually, you have to look at history. So we'll go back. We'll start. When should we start? Let's start from World War One. From World War I, we see Christians coming together to see what kind of ec exploitative economic practices that they can use on other people around the world. And then this was cemented in World War II, when the Christian economic system in Bretton Woods was finalized. And all of the current wars have been le linked back to this Christian economic system, which was finalized in Bretton Woods after World War II by the Christian powers. So from economic sources, uh, history, the Bible, we can see how Christianity is slowly destroying the world. Christianity has been used many, many times by many, many people to uh, enslave, to attack, to do so many evil around the world. Why? Because the Bible itself says these things are okay. The Bible says exploit the weak. The Bible says exploit the poor. That is in the Bible. This is not, you know, me making this stuff up. The rhetoric that Christians come out with, love your neighbor. Oh. You okay? Uh, I've lost the, the microphone. The, oh, you carry on talking. Okay, we're going to stop. And then resume. Oh, Just tell me when you want to resume. Sing bro, and then carry on. We've got okay. Okay, we've got your time in the way. Yeah, cool. So the rhetoric that Christians come out with, love your neighbor, turn the other cheek, <laughs> is just, rhetoric is the speech political speech the same thing that politicians use you know like trump make america great again you know this is just political lip service when you actually look at every single war through the for the last 200 years it is all related to christianity one minute and christian nations there ha there will never be peace on earth as long as we have uh, a racist ideology which teaches people to worship a white man, okay? That is the imagery of Christianity, that the God is a white man, worship this God, and that image has been used by Christians to enslave people since the 1400s. It's been used even before that to kill people. White Christians would kill black Christians or brown Christians on the road to Jerusalem just because they were not white. Christianity at its core is a racist, religion which allows people to be exploited who are not white and who are not Christian. That is all I have to say about that. You've got 10 seconds. Ah, uh, sorry, you can have it. Okay, just tell me when you... Yeah. Okay. Lisa. Ready, go. Go. So, uh, I thank you, brother, for possibly the nicest setup of Skittles to knock down I've ever encountered at Speaker's Corner. Go for it. Go for it's it. almost generous of you. Ah, uh, you have to be generous. So, now, I didn't notice, I didn't interrupt him, but already he's interrupting me within the first minute. So, he stated a number of fallacious points that I'll try to knock down as quickly as I can within the five minutes. However, there was a lot of points that were made, and it was almost like he was clutching them from air. He was just pulling out whatever came to mind and then putting them out to you. What I noticed about my brother's presentation, he didn't quote a single Bible verse, he didn't give a single statistic, and he didn't demonstrate the link between Christianity and any of the things that he talked about. Now, let's just deal with some fallacy first. Christianity is not like Islam. I am inviting you to a different religion entirely. Islam gives you a system of laws that you are called to submit to as Muslims. Christians say that by our knowledge of God, the Father demonstrated through Jesus Christ, we have an example of par excellence by which we can transform the inner man, the inner being, into such a person that they develop a good community and a good society. Now, Let's just do some com 
uh, comparisons. The brother says that Christianity has caused alcoholism. And he went on to talk about Christianity doing it deliberately. The reality is that the alcohol was invented before the Christian faith. There's many evidences of many cultures using alcohol before Christianity. Christians use alcohol in our sacraments. We have it at the sacrament of communion. It is permissible as a Christian to drink alcohol. But we do not mistake permissibility with abuse. And there is a difference and there is a very big difference. Christianity permits the use of alcohol in moderation that does not affect your behavior in any way by that, that you would then go on to harm people in a way you wouldn't want to be harmed yourself. Now, the Muslim community would say, well, this permissibility is the cause of alcoholism. But the fact of the matter is, the prohibition of the use of drugs in, Isla in the Islamic world has not stopped the abuse of drugs in those countries. Actually, what it has done is it has created such a sense of shame about the use of drugs that the very problem itself is denied. And that is why there is a huge opium abuse problem in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, and the Muslim communities there are ill-equipped to deal with it because their religion has created a culture of shame so that the problem cannot be admitted to and tackled. Now, the brother talked about slavery a lot. Certainly, the Christian church grew up in a time when slavery was permissible. This is true. It recognizes that in the New Testament in Paul's letters. However, the Christian faith when it dominated Europe, was starting to ban and fight against slavery from the 8th century and the 9th and the 10th, and I will present the facts shortly. Islam, by comparison, institutes slavery within the Quran and the Hadiths. One minute. Muhammad had slaves, Muhammad sold slaves, Muhammad's uh, companions had slaves and Muhammad's followers fall slaves. Notice the hecklers, notice the hecklers. They weren't talking when he was talking. Now, Islamic Sharia law is applicable by the Muslims for all time and in all places, which means that slavery, according to the Muslim who believes in the Quran and the Hadiths, is something that is applicable today. No wonder then that it was only in 1962 that Saudi Arabia abandoned slavery and that Mauritania only abandoned slavery in 1981. No wonder that the only society to reintroduce slavery is a Muslim society. Ten seconds. The so-called Islamic State. And also, in Libya, Muslims have reintroduced slavery and it is still being practiced in Saudi Arabia Stop. Stop. officially. Stop. Stop. ISIS ain't a Muslim, mate. What are you talking about? First of all, first of all, my oh, hold on, hold on, good hold on, hold on, colleague here. Yeah. Okay, I need a reason. Yeah, ISIS yeah. going to Muslim. What are you talking about? Could you do right. First of all, 26. my good colleague here said I didn't give any statistics. Okay. I'm anything from the Bible. But you have to remember, he, he, he constantly, he constantly, instead of defending Christianity, he tried to attack Islam. You have to remember, this is Christianity destroying the world. So, I will give the two references. The first reference of give the poor alcohol is Proverbs 31 7. The other one is Deuteronomy. Hold on, let me just check my phone. I have a poor memory. You'll have to forgive me for that. But I did just uh, think, yeah, I just screenshot it. Okay, so here we go. Deuteronomy 23, 23 20, where God is saying foreigners can be exploited. Okay, all right. So he, our good colleague here, said, you know, he said a lot of waffling. Uh, I can't really remember a lot of it, but I'll give you one thing. Uh, quickly, I've talked about Afghanistan. He said Muslims in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran are becoming addicted to opium. He's correct, they are. And the reason for this is the Christians of the West, the United States. Uh, Europe, etc. This is what is known as uh, sort of, you have different types of warfare. This is uh, a certain type of warfare that the West is using, Christians are using against Muslims. They bombed Afghanistan, which was the smallest uh, heroin production country during the time of the terrorist Taliban. Okay, 
And what did they do? The Americans went and took her over. And the Americans do not allow the Afghans to grow cotton, which would, which would grow very, very well in Afghanistan. Why? Because the Christian American law is that um, they are not allowed to help a foreign country compete against American companies. So they are happy for the heroin to be created and exported into Pakistan, into Afghanistan. And now the other thing was, he claimed that Christians wanted to end slavery, but that is a lie. The first person to even uh, offer to end slavery during the Atlantic slave trade was a Muslim called Mansa Musa. Okay, and then all the Christians in Europe used this guy as a uh, preacher, uh, praised him, and then used his, we were saying, to put shame on the Christian governments to say, oh, look at these Africans, what they're doing, look what the Christians are doing. At the time of the Atlantic slave trade in Africa, more than 50% of the population was literate. In Europe, it wasn't even 5%. Why was this? Because Islam was teaching people to get educated, to learn to read, to do all of these things. Whereas Christianity was teaching people, no, you can't even read your book because if you read the book, you're going to leave this religion. That's why only the priest is allowed to read it and teach you what the Bible says. Now it's changed and people can do it, whatever. But back then it was, you're not allowed to read it, you can't do anything. You know, so, that, so just like our good colleague here lies a lot, the priest can lie a lot. You know, it doesn't matter what the priest says. It doesn't matter what the Bible says because people can't even read. And okay, so, so let's get another one. So, so we're coming back to modern age. So what are all these wars going on right now about? They, are, they all are linked back to the Kufr system, the Christian system of exploiting the poor. The Christian economic system is built around very, very evil ideology, which is interest, which is exploiting the person who uh, is least able to be exploited, the person that is least able to do something for themselves. This is real exploitation. If I give you a uh, hundred pounds, and now even if you're dying and you're on your deathbed, if you don't give me that hundred back and the interest, I can chuck you out of your house. I've spoken to Christians about this before, and they have said to me, it's just, it's just, that's the best answer they can give me. But we see that Islam does not allow these sort of exploitative practices. Um, 60, 65 years ago, roughly, uh, A.J. Toynbee in a book, uh, Civilization on Trial, predicted that in the future the wars will not be between Christianity, democracy and communism or Christianity, democracy against forever. It will be Christianity, democracy against Islam. And the reason for that is Christianity allows people to be exploited. It allows the poor to be exploited. Islam does not. Christianity also may say, oh, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, which means if the ruler wants to exploit the poor, as a Christian, you have to help them. You know, whereas Islam says, no, you cannot do this. You have to fight against oppression. You have to fight against injustice. The Bible says, who cares? Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. If Caesar says it's legal for women to be raped, the Bible says, it's okay. You know, and we see that, why? Because of pornography and things like this. Where are, where's pornography filmed the most? In the Christian West. Why? Because give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Exploit the poor, exploit the women, exploit the children. This is Christianity, this is what Christianity teaches and has done. Okay, so, now, notice the heckling from the Islamic Dawah team. Okay, I am stop, trying stop, to talk, stop, I'm not, no, uh, my time will stop when you stop. No? Okay. Let's debate. Let's debate. When you okay. serve, my time will start. Okay, okay go. Just okay, so firstly, let's let's just separate in our minds Christianity from the West. The reality is the whole argument being presented by my friend here is completely fallacious. The Christian faith and Western liberal society are not synonymous. The Christian faith is larger than Western society. It existed in Africa in the first century in Egypt and Ethiopia. It existed in India from the first century. It existed in Russia long before any nation state that we would describe as a liberal democracy ever came into existence. So the idea that you can connect the failures of Western society to the whole of the Christian faith is totally fallacious. 
My brother here is mistaking culture with religion. Now, furthermore, it is certainly true that Western society was greatly influenced by the Christian faith. This society, the West, and all of its sins and all of its failures and all of its waxing and waning that we see today is a result precisely because it has been abandoning its Christian faith. It has been doing so since the enlightenment of the 1700s, which means that for the last 300 years, Christianity has been waning in the West, while is uh, not Islam, the uh, enlightenment has been rising. Now he talked about the Christian faith creating illiteracy and ignorance. The first universities were established in Europe by the church. Furthermore, he said that Muslims were being taught how to read the Quran. He's not telling the truth. Muslims were being taught how to recite the Quran. That is something different. Many Muslims today can read the Arabic script without understanding a single word that they are reading. Furthermore, he said that the opium problem in Pakistan, Afghanistan and Iran was true. He admits that it's there, but then he blames the West. What kind of culture has Islam produced in this man's mind that he cannot accept that the problem created and existing within another culture is connected to the culture itself? Am I trying to blame the destruction and the rotting of Western society on Islam? No, I am saying that it is an internal failure of Western Europe because we have abandoned our Christian faith. But him, because of the kind of arrogance and pride imbued within his inner man by this ideology that is supremacist and confrontational, seeks instead to blame others for the problems that exist within the Islamic world. What happened to self-responsibility? What happened to owning your own problems? This is one of the differences between Christianity and Islam. Christianity starts with the man, the inner man, and says that your life is your responsibility. And if you mess it up, it's your fault. Islam, because it is an ideological system that seeks to dominate the world, wants and believes itself to be perfect, when it fails, blames other people. It wasn't our fault that the caliphate failed, it was the failure of the caliphate. It's not our fault that Sharia law isn't fixing the problems of the Muslim world, it's the failure of Sharia law. Now, he said that Christianity creates the abuse of the poor. One minute. The fact of the matter is, that it is the Christians who have done the most to help the poor. Why do you think that our institutions in the West are so strong? It is because we have this sense of public responsibility that people like William Temple were arguing for in 1940s that created the welfare state that lifted people out of poverty. He was a Christian. So was the Tract Society that argued for the case of the poor. So was William, my, I'm sorry, I'm wet, I'm cold. Um, I forget his name, there's a reformer, he'll come to me later. But there's been many reformers within the Christian tradition who have done much to set up uh, charities to help the poor, like Bernardo's, like Young Men's Ten Christians Association, like the Salvation Army by William Booth, who everyone in a poor community knows has been helping our society. Can you hold on a second? I just want to... Are you going to quote the... Oh, I don't need to quote the Bible. I'm going to give you some history. Okay, yeah. All right, the Bible, people can read it. I'll just put links in the video. Okay, so here we go. You know, he said, oh, the opium crisis. Maybe he should learn some history. He should learn some history. Christian Britain tried to get the Chinese addicted to opium. This was called the Opium Wars. And then there was the Boxer Rebellion. You know, history goes in circles. If you do not learn your history, you are doomed to repeat it. And just like how those evil Christians try to make the innocent Chinese heroin addicts, they are doing the same thing today in Pakistan, in Afghanistan, and in Iran. Who protects the poppy fields? The American army does. It's not the Afghan army protecting the poppy fields, it's the Christian American army. Remember, God told George Bush to go to invade Afghanistan. Why? Because the Christian God wanted to take control of the opium production. All right.
So we go on to the next stage now. The next stage was uh, uh, oh, West Africa. Had the, when the slaves in West Africa were captured and taken to the Christian New World, you know, to become Christians, what, what happened when they got there? Could the white slave owner read and write? No, he couldn't. So what did they do? The slaves used to actually read and write. If you go and have a look at some of the old slave records, you will see that the slaves wrote them and they were written in Arabic. So if the slaves were just reading, how could they learn to read? Uh, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, how if they were just reading, how did they learn to write? Or were they just making up symbols as our, as our colleague here would claim? And you know, again, like I said, he tried to distance Christian and the Western liberalism. But at the same time, he is saying, ISIS is Islam. He is saying Saudi Arabia is Islam. Iran is Islam. All these countries are Islam, but Western liberal democracies are not Christian. What kind of what kind of pathetic reasoning is that? You know what I mean? Christianity teaches exploit the poor. Teaches exploit uh, everybody you can for the sake of the rich. Christianity is, in my opinion, a religion created by a tax collector allowing people to rob and rape and pillage with impunity. He claims that the first uh, welfare state was started here, but again, that's a lie. We see the first welfare state was created by Muslims, and its Muslim ideology is linked to protecting the poor, defending the poor, looking after the poor. If we look at who gives the most in charity, it is Muslims that give the most in charity, and then Jews, and then Christians. So these are statistically proven. So, you know, when he wants to claim all of these things, it's statistically proven. Whenever you want to claim all these things, we can see that for himself. We can see even when, let's just go back to when the Grenfell tragedy happened and Muslims were helping them. The Christians were attacking the Muslims. Why are you helping them? Oh, you just want to make yourselves look good. You know, some of his uh, colleagues or whatever, his Christian missionary team were attacking Muslims for helping the non-Muslims, okay? Also, we know missionaries, if they don't lie, they're not, they're not speaking. You know what I mean? You have to lie if you want to be a missionary. This is probably the first lesson you get taught at missionary school, in my opinion. <laughs> How to lie with a straight face. All right, see, see, he's laughing because he knows it's true. Yeah, all right. Uh, so, are you, what else are we saying? Oh, yeah, so I've done with, I've done with, I've done with, I've done with the heroin. Uh, opium thing. We know Christians do that because they did it in China. I've dealt with the literacy thing. We know uh, the Africans could read and write because they wrote down the slavery records for their slave masters in America in Arabic. Uh, what else did he claim? Charity. We know that Muslims are more charitable because it's already been established uh, through um, statistically uh, here in England even Muslims donate the most amount percentage-wise by community. So we, we've covered all of these things. Yet he has not once, he has not once said, uh, explained to me why Christianity teaches to give the poor alcohol, to make the poor alcoholics. He has not once told, to, told me why Christianity teaches to exploit the poor using interest. Islam doesn't allow this. Islam banned alcohol. Do we have, uh, do we have this? No, we don't. Why? Why? Because Islam's core uh, basis teaches people why alcohol is bad, whereas Christianity doesn't really teach you anything other than exploit the poor, give the poor alcohol. You know, and also, what else does it say? What else does Christianity teach? It also teaches, you know, that white people are superior to people of color. And the reason we know this is because they decided to make the image of the Christian God a white man. Why is the white man the God of Christians? Because they want to use seconds. it to exploit anyone who is not white. Okay. Okay, stop. You want so. Sorry. So, again, my brother here is making totally fallacious arguments. He's saying, oh, Christians made Jesus a white man. That is true in European art. We represented Jesus as a white man. But I've traveled all over the world. And in Ethiopia, they represent Christ as a black man. And in Palestine, they represent him as an olive tone man. And funnily enough, in Japan, they represent him as a Japanese man. Are all of these cultures now trying to make themselves supremacist because they are portraying Christ in their art according to how they see him? No, of course not. Notice he's not accusing Ethiopian Christians of being supremacist or of Japanese Christians of being supremacist. He's only accusing European Christians of being supremacist. 
And really that cuts to the heart of where this man is coming from, a hatred of the white European. He has a prejudice against white Europeans and so he villainizes their culture in a way that when he finds exactly the same thing in Ethiopia and Japan, he doesn't criticize them for. Now, how more exploitative can you have than the slave trade? We know that Europeans had a slave trade. We Christians in Europe dealt with our slave trade and we stopped it. We took responsibility for the crimes that we were committing and we have never hidden from the fact that we were doing wrong. Did the Muslims? No. Islam dominated in Saudi Arabia since the time of Mohammed to the present. If Islam that dominated Saudi Arabia for 1400 years had the power to stop slavery, it could have and should have, but did it? No. Slavery was only abandoned in Saudi Arabia in 1962. Oman only abandoned slavery in 1970. Mauritania only abandoned slavery in 1981. Egypt only abandoned slavery in 1895. Morocco only abandoned slavery in 1922. Iraq only abandoned slavery in 1924. Iran only abandoned slavery in 1929. Qatar only abandoned slavery in 1952. By comparison, in 873 AD, Pope John VIII banned the holding of Christian slaves. In 960 AD, the Doge Petro Cordiano IV banned the slave trade outright and completely. Notice the heckling. In 1080, history books, in 1080, <laughs> William I banned slavery in England and Normandy. Now, why the difference? Why were Christians abandoning slavery in the 8th and the 10th century when Muslims at the same time were taking Africans as slaves into the Middle East and Europeans as slaves into the Middle East? Why? Because of the examples that we follow. Here's just one. Jesus, our example, at a time when slavery was normal, never had a slave ever and Christians believe that all people are made in the image of God. Islam by comparison has this example. Listen carefully. It has been narrated on the authority of Salama who said we fought against the Fazara and Abu Bakr was the commander over us. He had been appointed by the messenger of Allah when we were only at an hour's distance from the water of the enemy, Abu Bakr ordered us to attack. We made a halt during the last part of the night to rest, and then we attacked from all sides and reached their watering place where the battle was fought. Some of the enemies were killed and some were taken prisoners. I saw a group of persons that consisted of women and children. I was afraid lest they should reach the mountain before me so as to escape. So I shot an arrow between them and the mountain. When they saw the arrow, they stopped. So I brought them, driving them along. Among them was a woman. May I finish? Can I finish this quote? Was a woman from Badu. Can I, can I finish the quote? Let me finish this quote. He's agreed to let me finish the quote. Banu Fazara, she was wearing a leather coat. With her was a daughter who was one of the prettiest girls in Arabia. I drove them along until I bought them, until I brought them to Abu Bakr, who bestowed that girl upon me as a prize. This woman had just seen a fan. First of all, you know, okay, so we had our friend here again make false statements. Make us that I don't know. I've never heard that. Have you come on that? So we allow that. So he said, 
uh, Christians abolish slavery again. This is a lie. This is a lie. I don't, I don't know why Christians lie so much. Is it? Are they taught this at missionary school? Is the first lesson how to lie as a good Christian? You know, I just want to know this. Okay, so here we go. All right, so the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bans uh, slavery. We know this already. We know, we know from historical sources, we know from Islamic sources that slavery was only allowed during a certain time period and then it was stopped and it was banned. It was no longer allowed. We know that the Prophet said, uh, you know, for everybody to release their slaves. He also released all of his slaves. We know that in Islam, we know in Islam that uh, a slave, I tell you what, it all comes down to this. In Islam, if you are a slave, you have every right to defend yourself and free yourself. What does the Bible teach? The Bible teaches as long as the slave master has not killed that slave, you have to be a good, obedient slave. We know when the Muslims went to the New World, all the slave rebellions were then started by the new Muslims who had come there. They started the slave rebellions. What did the black Christian slaves do? Nay, master, we want the pie in the sky. We want the pie in the sky that, you know, the white Christian had indoctrinated into them. And if some, if some Japanese people are today using a Japanese image of Jesus and Ethiopians are today using a black image of Jesus, etc. It does not negate the fact that since the beginning of the Christian church and the image that they created of Jesus, it was a white man, a white God. If you look at anywhere, you will see that the reason white Christians, white Christian men find it very, very hard to leave Christianity is because their ego will not allow them to. Why? Because God is white and they are white. And so they have a right to do this. He claimed that I hate white people or whatever, or I, you know, I'm racist towards white people. You know, that's that's just a joke. You know, you know, the ideology that Christianity teaches is evil and it is exploitative and it allows people to be exploited. Okay, you see the Bible. If we go and actually have a look at uh, the case of white Christians wanted slavery. Today, even today in Libya, the slavery that is going on there is because of Christian Italians <laughs> paying the Libyans to stop uh, the Libyans going uh, across the sea. Go have a look, go do your research and see for yourself. Italians are paying the Libyans not to allow the Africans, uh, African migrants to cross the sea. This is true, this is real information. You can go have a look about it. Okay, so why, why, what did Christianity do? You see, in the, in the Bible, you know, God gave Abraham permission to have slaves and that is why Christians believe it was okay to have slaves. In Canaan, Ham, he was made a slave to his brother. In Genesis, again, that gave Christians ammunition to have slaves. We also know that uh, slavery was widespread in the Christian world, in the Roman world, sorry. When did Jesus speak out about it? He never spoke out about it. How come? How come? Why didn't Jesus speak out about slavery? You know what I mean? Ah, yeah, Prophet Muhammad did. And even said, uh, free your slaves, let your slaves go. Now, why did he do this? Because Prophet Muhammad was a true prophet of God. Just like Jesus was a true prophet of God. But the Christian prophet Paul was an interloper, a tax collector who made up the Christian religion. And from that, we can see why all the evil has spread all over the world. A religion that teaches man to worship another man and that allows the rich to exploit the poor with drugs. It says give the poor drugs. Alcohol is a drug. And the Bible says to give the poor drugs. Does anyone know any book that says to give the poor people drugs? Is there a book? Does the Quran say to give the poor people drugs? No, it doesn't. Does the Bible? Yes, it does. And no one can deny the fact. Why does the Bible, Christian God, want to be a drug dealer? That's what I want to know. Why is the Christian God a drug dealer and a banker? The Christian God is a drug dealer and a banker. And that's how we can see the world is in the situation that it is in today. Why? Because the Christian God has made it legal for Christians to exploit the poor and the rich. And they know that Islam will not allow this. And that is why the Christians have to attack Islam and have to attack Muslims and have been doing so for hundreds of years. Do not think this just started 10 years ago or 20 years ago. This started hundreds and hundreds of years ago when racist Christians couldn't cope that Muslims had taken Jerusalem. And since then, they have been trying to attack and destroy Islam.
So, so my brothers, please, don't, don't brother, sisters. My, my brother's argument essentially boils down to this. Islamist movements in Libya are taking Africans and slaves, and it's the Europeans' fault. No, the fact of the matter is, it is Islamist movements who are funding their fight with one another by black African slaves. They are following the example of their prophet, who himself sold slaves, who himself practiced slavery. There is no basis within Islam to abandon the slave trade. The Christian faith, by comparison, challenges the powerful to be aware of their power and to honor and look after the poor and to take responsibility for their wealth. The Christian faith teaches that there is a danger in wealth that causes a man to forget God. We read in James chapter 5, Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries which are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your garments have become moth-eaten. Your gold and your silver have rusted and their rust will be a witness against you and will consume your flesh like fire. It is in the last days that you have stored up your treasures. Behold, the pay of the laborers who mowed your fields and which have been withheld by you cries out against you. And the outcry of those who did the harvesting has reached the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. You have lived luxuriously on the earth and led a life of wanton pleasure. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and put to death the righteous man. He does not resist you. The Bible is condemning those who hold on to their riches whilst not caring for the poor. The instruction here in James is that the rich have a responsibility to those who are under them, to pay them fairly, to give them a secure life. Now, the Christian faith teaches that all men are made in the image of God. We believe that God gives everyone a dignity. It was for this reason that Christians abandoned the slave trade. That was the marshalling argument that they made. By comparison, we have in the Islamic world the example of Muhammad. So, Sahih al Muslim 3433 and 2150 in Abu Dawood. The Apostle of Allah sent a military expedition to Atwas on the occasion of the Battle of Hunain. They met their enemy and fought with them. Then they defeated them and took them captives. Some of the companions of the Apostle of Allah were reluctant to have sex with those female captives in the presence of their husbands who were unbelievers. Sex in the presence of their husbands who were unbelievers. So Allah, the Exalted, sent down the Quranic verse, Surah 424. So Allah is permitting the Muslim community to rape female captives in the presence of their husbands. And this man is saying that my religion is exploitative. What then do you call this, unless you would call it a crime? If you have a conscience, use it. If your conscience tells you that Muhammad's example was despicable, then abandon Islam, forsake it, and come to an example that teaches responsibility with wealth and personal responsibility for your own conduct as Christ taught the Christians and his apostles. Now, I would like my brother to comment on the evidence I've provided and for once to start quoting his evidence, not simply giving references so that 
we can actually talk about what he's suggesting. Okay, Bob. Okay, first of all, that last hadith you just gave is a poor translation. If anyone actually wants to go and have a look at what it means, you can. I'm not going to waste my time because you guys can go and look at it. I know Christians make up hadith and use poor translations to put their uh, thing across, so it doesn't really bother me. Now, if anyone actually wants to uh, see what I was saying is the truth, you can just Google Italy paying Libyans. Here, Italy paying Libyans, okay, and it'll give you all of the thing of how Italy is helping the Libya, is paying the Libyans to grab black Africans and not uh, let them go across. Now, now here we go. So here we go. Now if we come to, if we come to, why did so many Christians support slavery? We can again see that the Bible has allowed it. And when he says, Prophet Muhammad said, I'll oh, take the slaves, take that slaves, we Muslims do not deny it. But you see, slavery in Islam is like akin to you have to respect the person, you have to look after the person, you cannot beat that person, you cannot starve that person. It's not like slavery in Christianity, where you are allowed to beat that person within an inch of his life. And as long as that slave can get up the next day and has not died, it is not a sin upon you. Whereas we know in Islam that if you beat your slave, if you abuse that person, you are going to be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're going to go to Jahannam for that. Whereas in Christianity, you are going to get a reward. If you beat your slave, if you abuse your slave, the Christian God is going to give you a reward. We know, we know, we know that in Christianity, rape is allowed. If you get raped in the countryside, it's okay. You're not allowed to be murdered. But if you get raped in the city, then in Christianity you are murdered. Why is this? If I got raped, if a woman is raped in the countryside in Christianity, she's not going to be punished for it. But if she's raped in the city, she is going to be punished for it. Why? Because Christianity says people in the, you know, Christians in the countryside cannot control their urges and so they rape women, it's fine. You know, if the Christians are okay with uh, rape of women as long as it's in the countryside. If you're a Christian and you want to rape a woman, go and do it in the countryside. Christianity allows it, all right? So don't worry about any of that stuff, whatever. It's all good, it's all good, okay? It's true though, you know, you can look it up. It's, in, it's all in the Bible. And you know, I, I can't, I don't give references so much because I was seriously ill a long time ago and my memory's not as good as it used to be. So I can't bother with remembering numbers. You know, this guy, he likes to remember references and numbers, etc., like that. You know, I don't, I, I, I ain't got time for that stuff. You guys can use it. So here we go. What else do we want to know? What else do you guys, oh yeah. Why is Christianity destroying the world? That was our main topic. So let's bring it back to that topic. We know that Christianity has allowed people to be robbed and exploited. He said uh, Christians taught people this and taught people that. Oh, the Christians created the first universities, this, that. No, they didn't. The first university was created by a Muslim woman. You know what I mean? A Muslim woman created the first university, not no Christian. Christianity being educated is a sin. That is why Christians are happy to be Christians. They don't want to be educated. As soon as you can become educated, you become a Muslim. And as soon as you look at it honestly and without any sort of prejudice or any sort of lies, or if you stop making up lies like Christians do, you know, a good Christian story is this. And this is going to teach you all you need to know about Christian missionaries. In Africa, where my family is from, well, even though we're black Africa, but you know we're from there. Okay, when missionaries come there, what they do is they get children and they take these children on a trip. And when they're returning, the missionaries say, the car has broken down. And then they tell the children, pray to your God. And uh, the, Christ, the children, they pray to their God, they pray to their God, and nothing happens. And then the Christian missionaries, they say, let's pray to Jesus now. And so when the children pray to Jesus, the missionaries start the car and say, hallelujah, the car started. And this is a typical Christian missionary tactic. Lies and deception. There is exactly what our brother here does. He lies and he deceives. Why? Because he, no one can explain which God is the Christian God. Is Jesus the God, or is God the God, or is the Holy Spirit the God? And because no Christian can ever explain this, they have to lie and deceive and slander Muslims and Islam. If Islam was the was not true, why are more educated women in the West becoming Muslim? Why are they? Why are they? Why are they leaving Christianity and atheism and agnosticism and becoming Muslim if Islam is not true? Why are they leaving this religion uh, that teaches you to worship a white man? Why are they leaving this white man religion? That's why are they leaving, why are they leaving it? I just leave that to you. In England, you could rape your wife 
20 years ago, it was legal to rape your wife. Why? Because it's Christian ideology. Islam, you cannot do that. I know some people may try and twist things, but it doesn't really matter. Because Muslims know the truth. Okay, so again, shall we do one more round? Uh, okay, so, so, okay, one more round. So he tried to say that Christians abuse the poor and we don't have a care for the poor. Notice he's not provided any references and when I, I challenged him I to, don't interrupt. don't interrupt. When I challenged him to, he said, oh, I can't be bothered with that. I got a bad memory, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Now, I asked him to deal with the evidence that I provided and his only response was to say it was a bad translation. Unfortunately for him, the translation that I used was by an Arab Muslim. Yes. So if he's saying it's a bad translation, let him bring forward a better one and explain to me why the Arab Muslim made the bad translation that talked about raping a female captive. His example, his moral paradigm. Now, by contrast, Christians have this paradigm. Speaking of the Christians, in Acts chapter 4, and the congregation of those who believe were of one heart and soul, and not one of them claimed anything belonging to him, which was his own. But all things were common property to them. And with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and abundant grace was upon them all. For there was not a needy person among them. Did you hear that? There was not a needy mo a person among them. For all who were owners of land or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales and lay them at the apostles' feet and they would be distributed to each as any had need. This is the paradigm of the Christians. This is why it is in Western Europe and in Christian civilizations that the most people have been lifted out of poverty. It is no surprise that it is the Christian faith that has produced the most charities, working and helping not just our own people, but everyone else as well. Virtually every major charity in this country was founded by Christians. Let's just use one example. The Salvation Army is one Christian community that only has 250,000 members. Remember that number. The government itself recognizes that the Salvation Army provides the highest level of welfare support after the state itself. Now, how many Muslims live in this country? Nearly four million, I believe. So, the Islamic community following Islam, numbering four million, are outpunched by one Christian group known as the Salvation Army. And that's before I add on to that everything that all the other churches do as well. He might not know it, but the Catholic Church alone does more charity work than the UN. That's before I add on all the other churches. The Christian community in India represent only 3% of the overall population. They are present far beyond their proportion to the overall population within groups working in social services, schools, nurses, charities, by 10%. The Muslim community in India is one of the largest in the world, and they are outpunched, measure for measure, proportion for proportion, by the Christian community. I go back to slavery. Why did Christians abandon slavery hundreds of years before Islam? Christians were fighting against slavery in the 8th and 9th century, whilst Muslims were practicing it full heartedly. The Muslim slave trade is the oldest and largest 
and longest lasting slave trade in the history of the world. It still goes on today. It's still happening today. The Christians in 1315, under Louis X of France, in 1315 said that any slave who walks into the Kingdom of France is automatically a free man. In 1315, show me something like that in Islam. In 1256, Bologna banned slavery completely for everyone. Show me something like that in the Ten same seconds. period of time. You can't because Mohammed never gave you the precedent or the ideological means to do so. That's exploitation. Take responsibility. First of all, you see our Christian friend here is a liar. Why is he a liar? We know that Prophet Muhammad gave all of his slaves away and he said those who give your slaves away are the best among you. You don't want to exploit these people. We know how he taught people to look after those people. And again, we know that slavery in the Muslim world is not slavery in the Christian world. Slavery in the Muslim world is not beating your slave, raping your slave, abusing your slave, starving your slaves. We know this. We know Christians say, oh, they used to so they used to pasteurise the black people. That's why there's no black men in, in, um, in Saudi Arabia or wherever. They worry about the women. Well, they, well, they all say castrating the women. Why don't the women have children? So that just shows how much liars these Christians are. Why are they black people in America, but no black people in the Arab Muslim world, etc.? Because it was not slavery like the Americans. Okay, you mentioned the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army is a fascist organization. <laughs> they do not support anyone who is not a Christian. If you want to get aid from the Salvation Army, you have to go and get it from them. The Salvation Army threatened New York to stop supplying anyone with help or benefits or anything like that if the state of New York forced them to help a couple that the Salvation Army did not want to help that went against their Christian ideology. So when he mentions all of this, it comes with getting Christian aid comes with a cash, a catch, a catch 22. You want some Christian aid, you got to do this. You want some Christian help, you got to do that. Muslim aid does not come with that. Islamic aid does not come with that. Penny appeal does not come with that. It does not matter what religion you are. It does not matter what group you are. If you want help, we will help you. He again, he tried to, uh, you know, again, he made his crazy claims. Oh, I didn't give any reference. You mind moving over a bit? Again, he made some things. I didn't give any references. So, you know, I'll give you some references. Here, we know that the Christian God allows murder, rape, and pillage. In Deuteronomy 20, 10 to 14, we know, we know the Christian God allows murder, rape, and pillage. Again, in Numbers 31, 7 to 18, we know the Christian God allows murder, rape, and pillage. In Judges 21, 10, where he advocates the murder and rape of innocent women and children, we know the Christian God, what, as long as you're, if you're three years old, and a woman, you are safe from the Christian God. If you are if you are over three years old, the Christian God has allowed for you to be raped and abused. This is what Christianity teaches, and this is what he hides and does not allow. And he claims that Christianity stepped up to try and ban slavery. Again, these are European lies. These are European lies, and the Europeans have made these lies since the 1920s. If you actually do your history, you can you actually do your um, education wherever learn about it you can see that uh, the european lies about islamic trade slavery is based on polemics and this is what he has used he has used an argument that has no basis where are the african slaves in in the muslim world then where are they i don't see any do you exactly why are they not there because it was not slavery like christian slavery christian slavery that god allowed god sanctioned prophet muhammad is not god but their God sanctioned these things. You have to remember that. They put their gods, they put their gods, sorry, I didn't mean to. They put their gods uh, uh, standings onto our prophet's standings and tried to say, your prophet is not as good as our God. No man is as good as God. But their Christian God, Jesus, did not even say stop slavery when Jesus was walking around in Rome. Rome was the capital of slavery. So everybody was being enslaved by Rome. Why did Jesus not go around saying stop enslaving? He's trying to say our prophet, who is a man, did not stop slavery, but their God, Jesus, did not stop slavery. Again, we see the lies of these Christian missionaries. The Bible is full of it, and that is why he's such a, you know, really good at making this up, because like I said to you already, Christians, they go and they get lessons on how to lie.
and we have seen this and it's been a very good example of it. Jesus one minute! Minute. Okay, are you, are you walking off? Are you stopping? My conclusion. We heard the brother basically say that slavery in Islam is not slavery like it is in Europe. Christian slavery. So, he admits that there is slavery in Islam. Thank you for admitting that. That proves my point. And he also agrees with the evidence that he's just said he never denied it. So we have an admission by the Muslim speaker that an exploitative practice of taking slaves is intrinsic to Islam. I'm not interrupting you. Don't interrupt me. Stop. Stop my time. Stop my time. Okay, keep your voice down. As long as you're not going to lie, no, no. My time will start again. Calm down. Don't lie. No. Just calm down. Yeah. Liars. Yeah. We'll, just, we'll just carry on if he wants to embarrass himself. So, so basically he has admitted the exploitative practices within Islam and he never denied it. Notice he never came back to the hadith about rape. Never. That's exploitation. Why isn't he dealing with that? Now, let's talk about dimitude and the practice and the abuse of Christians. He said that Islamic charity never comes with any conditions. Well, go to the Christians of Pakistan, who when those floods happened a few years ago that affected so many people, there is many testimonies of the Christians being told by the Islamic charities that they could not receive support because they were Kufar, because they were Christians. In other words, because they were not Muslims. So he's not telling the facts. If you want to find my sources, go to Barnabas Fund, go to Open Doors, go to Christian Solidarity Worldwide, you will find the testimonies there. Furthermore, he said, where's all the African slaves? I'll tell you where they are. They're in Chad and in Mauritania and in Sudan. In Chad, slavery is still a legal practice. Muslims enslaving Muslims. In Sudan, the Arab Janjaweed, they come from the north, they raid the Christian villages of the south, and they take women and children as slaves to the north. There's plenty of evidence there, and the people that are going to free those slaves are Christian charities who go and buy the slaves from their slave masters and then set them free. I'd encourage you all to look up what Janissaries were. Janissaries in the Ottoman Empire were Christian children kidnapped from their families, indoctrinated into Islam, and then sent as a slave army back to Europe to fight against Christians. That's slavery. Now, furthermore, if we're talking about exploitative practices, he talked about rape. In Islam, you need witnesses for, I believe, to prove that you have been raped. How can a woman pursue justice in this way? No. The Christian faith, he says, teaches slavery. I've been to church all my life. I've never heard a single sermon about slavery being something that we can do. Perhaps one of you other Christians can come forward and tell me if you've heard a sermon in your church saying that you can take slaves. But in Islam, they will teach in a mosque how to treat a slave according to Islam. Are you saying? Well, we'll deal with that shortly. We'll deal with that shortly. Go and look up some of the sermons coming out of Saudi Arabia. Go and look up some of the sermons coming out of Saudi Arabia. No. The Christian faith teaches that there is an intrinsic dignity within us all made in the image of God and that is the basis upon our equality. It is the basis upon which we build a sense of justice. The Christian faith is the faith that produced the abolition of slavery. It is the faith that produced a world in which there is the possibility for women to struggle for equal rights in society. In Saudi Arabia, women have only just been given the permission to drive. Now, the fact of the matter is that Islam has dominated in Saudi Arabia for 1400 years. 
They are saying, we've got a heckler here who wants to take me up on points. But I would encourage you to look into his complaint. Actually, actually, since you started, this should end with me. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Right, no, he's confusing. No, it's fine too. I guess it's his last one. All right, so. Well, it, it, it normally, good practice is that the one that starts isn't the one that ends, but he doesn't seem to want to be fair. Okay, here we go. Should we? Again, you know, we had our friend here, you know, make all these claims, you know, these false claims about how great Christianity is and how great Christianity has been you know, to help people. But again, England, it was legal to rape your wife less than 20 years ago. How come? It's a Christian country, right? So, you know, it's okay to rape your women in Christianity. Uh, what else did we have? We had um, slavery. Again, he seems to be uh, forgetting that the Prophet Muhammad saw some, uh, released all his slaves. He even mentioned, you know, it's better to release all your slaves, do not have these slaves, let them go. And he seems to think the slavery in Islam is like what slavery is in Christianity. No, that is not the case. In Islam, it is uh, akin to indentured servitude. That is probably the best way of explaining it. Whereas in Christianity, it is strip that person of his rights, of his freedom, of his identity. When a slave is taken in the Muslim world, do they change that slave's name to uh, a Muslim name and strip him of his identity and his rights? No, they don't. Why? Because eventually they want to release that slave. That slave was taken as a prisoner of war, not for commercial reasons. Christianity, it was about commercial reasons. Let's take these black people, exploit them, so us rich just admitted on tape can become the practice rich. of slavery in Islam. Uh, again, you have to understand, slavery in Islam is like indentured servitude. It is not like Christian slavery, where Christians are allowed to beat those slaves, abuse those slaves, because the Bible gives them permission. Whereas in, the, in Islam, in the Quran, it tells you, if you do anything like this, what the Bible gives permission for you to do to your slave, you will be punished for it. Even the Prophet has said, you know, those of you who are uh, evil to those people who are unable to defend themselves, the I will deal with you. In the 21st century. Now we know again, today, Christians are exploiting everyone. Christians are bombing, raping, killing, pillaging the world over. Where is there peace in the world? There is no peace in the world. Why? Because Christianity is destroying the world. No, Christianity think. dominates the world. Not Al Qaeda. Christianity no, is Hezbollah. a Christianity was created by the enemies uh, of humanity. You know, the, the devil created Christianity. And the devil today has continued this evil warfare around the world where evil Christians exploit <laughs> poor people. They give, they give evil Christians, they evil give Christians. groups of people weapons <laughs> so they can kill and attack other people. Evil Christians starved uh, Irish people uh, here. Uh, Why? Christians. Because they Isis did not Christians, want to. Right? Evil Christians, there is no first of all, you have to understand, You're not ISIS, to are <laughs> Taliban, etc. They're all American uh, created institutes. You know, they follow Christian principles of exploiting and killing poor people. ISIS, Where's his evidence? ISIS Where's is his evidence? more close to the Bible Where's than it is the to the Islam. To exploit people? It is, I already showed you with the Bible where, in, where, in Proverbs, where, 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 the, where your Christian God says, the, exploit the rich where, with, where, with where, apple. Where, where's, the, where's the instruction to exploit You show me where the instruction is in Islam to exploit I, I, people. I, I, I've just show, I, I no, didn't you didn't, no, you didn't. Oh, yeah, you just I'll show you, I'll show you. Exploit poor people, right? Like, exploit I'll show, poor people. I'll show you in the Quran. Show us where it says exploit yeah, poor people. I'm going to. I'm going and to show poor you. people. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. He asked, me, he asked me to show him in the Quran where it says to exploit people. Poor people. I'm going to show you. Show me. Also prohibited are women already married except those whom your right hands possess. Uh, this me, is talking, me, lying Christian this is liar, talking exactly about Christian having liar. sex no, no, no. with women liar. who this are your Christian prisoners. Liar. This is about that is war. what this that about war. is talking about. This is about war. So, this is about war. Do you think it is justified Christian to rape women? No, 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 I never said that. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. What does it say? It does not say that. Also prohibited are women verse. already married, except those verse. whom your read hands possess. Read the next verse. Now, read the next verse. now, read the next verse. now, read let's, the next verse. let's carry on. Go let's carry on. This verse was verse. revealed. See this line, Christian. When this will not incident, read the next verse. The real life Christian would not he doesn't want it. He doesn't. He said. He said he wanted you, me to show him evidence. You, it shows you. And now I'm showing him evidence. You're a liar. He doesn't want no, no, to no. listen. Go to the next verse. He doesn't want Go to listen. Go to the next verse. Let's look at the evidence. Go to the next verse. The evidence is 
Sahih Thanks. Abu Dawood, 2150, Sahih Al Muslim, 34, 33. The Apostle of Allah sent a military expedition to Atwaz on the occasion of the Battle of Hunain. They met their enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them captives. Some of the companions of the Apostle of Allah were reluctant to have sex with their female captives in the presence of their husbands who were unbelievers. So Allah the Exalted sent down the Quranic verse, Surah 4, Ayah 24. And if we go to Surah 4, Ayah 24, it reads, also prohibited are women already married except those whom your right hands possess. That is Amen. exploitation. And when confronted with the evidence, the Islamic Dawah team runs away because the evidence is too embarrassing for them to deal with. The reality is that the Islamic Dawah team and those who have embraced Islam or considering doing so should ask their conscience does your conscience permit you to applaud this kind of moral example? And if the answer is no, then follow your conscience because your conscience is from God. Your conscience is leading you out of Islam. Your conscience is leading you to a better way, the way of Christ and his apostles. Amen. Amen. I am tired. Hi guys, um, as you can see from uh, our debate, the Christian guy was very, very disingenuous. He was uh, making false accusations and false claims. And when he was shown uh, uh, what he was saying was a lie, especially towards the end when I just had enough of him and I walked off, I was asking him to read the next verse because the next verse actually shows you what it's all about. And it's not about rape and all of that stuff. And this is why he did not want to read the next verse. If you want, you can go and have a look for yourself. If you're honest person, you can see Muslims, we don't have political global power. Christians have the global political power. So why are all these wars going on? If Christianity is peace and this and that, and why is all this poverty? If Christianity is sent from God, why is there so much poverty? Why is there so much destruction? You have to ask those for yourselves. Muslims do not have the global political power. Christians have the global political power. And the Christian economic system is what is destroying the world, which is, like I said, exploit the poor and give the poor drugs. The Bible has given us permission for this, well, Christians permission for this, to give the poor drugs and to exploit them using uh, economic practices. I'm not denying that Christians may have done good things or charity, etc. What I'm just saying to you is if you look at it openly, you can see that the world is being destroyed by Christian ideology. All right, thank you very much.